Welcome to Success Story, the most useful podcast in the world. I'm your host, Scott D. Clary. The Success Story podcast is part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. The HubSpot Podcast Network is the audio destination for business professionals who seek the best education and inspiration on how to start and grow a business. HubSpot Podcast Network hosts act as on-demand mentors to entrepreneurs, startups, and scale-ups through practical tips and inspirational stories. Listen, learn, and grow with the HubSpot Podcast Network at hubspot.com slash podcast network. Today, my guest is is Sam Kelly. Sam is an internationally recognized Twitter expert, social media strategist, author, and speaker. She is known as the tweeting goddess. She has a following of over 53,000 highly engaged followers on Twitter. She is also the founder of the Women's Inspire Network, a global support network for women-led businesses with another large following of over 16,000 on Twitter. Her path from lone parent on social welfare to highly successful entrepreneur is a testament to her incredible ability to make things happen. She's gone through a lot in her life. We're going to unpack that. She is now recognized as a digital influencer and social media expert. This is what we spoke about. Brand perception, how brands can build relationships with customers using social media. We spoke about how to use Twitter to raise your own profile, how to get your event trending on Twitter, how to sell products on Twitter, how Twitter can change your life as it changed hers, how to create communities online and bring them offline. We spoke about live events, live streaming on Twitter, so social media. We spoke about trolls, how to deal with trolls, uh, customer success, why not getting on social and not getting on Twitter is the biggest mistake your business can ever make. And then we walk through some Twitter content and profile strategies. So all in all, this is a Twitter, a Twitter heavy episode, a social media episode for anybody that wants to learn how to do social better. This is what Sam does for businesses. And she unpacks her playbook in this episode. So I hope you get something from it. Again, this is Sam Kelly, Twitter expert, social media strategist, author, speaker, known as the Tweeting Goddess. Okay, well, first of all, I never even went to college. Uh, I just did normal high school, the equivalent over here in Ireland. And um, um, my story kind of starts really about um, 13 years ago. I decided to stop drinking alcohol because I'm 13 years sober now um, because I felt like it was holding me back and it was stopping me from reaching my full potential and I loved it as well which didn't help so I decided uh, it was affecting others around me so I, I did that first and that's kind of how my, my journey into business started because when you get rid of one thing that's holding you back and it could be a person it could be Coca-Cola it could be uh, cigarettes it could be you know something whatever it is that's holding you back once you get rid of that that's when you really get a chance to shine and, and, and be the best version of yourself. So that's where my story started. And then three years later, my father passed away and I was devastated. And um, I was kind of going through grief at the time. But then my daughter, oh, she got her first period, which is a real taboo, big taboo topic, right? So this is where my journey into business started. So it was like, oh my God, I felt so sorry for her. So I went over to the shop and I went over to the supermarket and I said, I'll get her some kind of beginner set or something that's going to make this transition a bit easier. And I couldn't believe there were no beginner sets. So right there in the supermarket aisle, I don't know, maybe it was my dad speaking. I don't know. I was hitting 40. My marriage had broken up. My other daughter was about to start mainstream school and my ducks were kind of lined up in a row to do something. But you know, when someone passes away that you love, you kind of start thinking, oh my God, life's too short and you only live once. And, you know, and I was kind of looking at my life and thinking what impact had I made, you know, in my life. And I think that mm. all those things together made me decide, I know, I'll create this gift box for welcome to womanhood or whatever. And so right there in the supermarket aisle, I decided I would do it. So that's what I did. And my sister built me a website and I started using Twitter to market the business. And that's how my whole journey into Twitter started. And the business was called Funky Goddess. Um, and I know there's a, a version of a show that we have over here called Dragon's Den. It's called Shark Tank over there. And so I went on that TV show here in Ireland. Uh, and at the time, I had about 5000 followers on Twitter. And when I went on the show, um, I was telling everyone I'm going to be on Dragon's Den, blah, blah, blah. And then when I went on the show, um, a butterfly landed on the makeup girl's light when she was doing my makeup for the TV show. And she said, oh, my God, there's a butterfly here in January. And I was like, well, actually, that's my dad, I'd say, you know, because me and dad used to watch it together. He used to think, oh, that's a great idea. That's a great business idea and all this. And um, so when I went up to the judges on the TV show, I kind of the emotions got the better of me and I ended up being the girl who cried on Dragon's Den. So that kind of 
put me propelled me into the public eye because everybody loved the story they loved the fact that this businesswoman all of a sudden showed the human side and it kind of showed me the power of storytelling and it showed me the power on twitter of that episode and showing the real side you know the authenticity and that's really where my kind of journey in the public eye started so yeah so that's where I started and um, and then I I sold the business after a year because I didn't get the investment after the tv show and my followers and my PR and everyone wanted to interview me and I was on tv and I was on the radio and everything and um, but still I wasn't making a profit I needed that investment so I shelved the business a customer bought it off me and then a local hotel here said to me, you're really good at Twitter. Could you show us how to do it? We'll pay you. And that's when I realized if somebody has is willing to pay for something that you can solve for them, if you they have a problem, you can solve it. That's when you have a business. So I decided to change my funky goddess Twitter handle to Tweeting Goddess. And that's how Tweeting Goddess was born. Wow. So so just to, that was five, that was about four, four or five minutes and <laughs> you had major how many how many major life events you had um you were you you went sober you had a, a parent a father pass away go on dragon's den uh tell a story to the world break down on dragon's den in front of the world <laughs> yeah start a business sell a business and then now pivot into a social media career so the 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 i guess the the takeaway is at what, and and sorry, just at, at what point? Like, what were you doing previous to to this? Like, what was the what was the career be, before you chose but to be sober? I, I traveled. Uh, yeah, I traveled a lot. Uh, I lived in Paris for two years. I lived in Hong Kong for two years, and I used to actually teach English as a foreign language when I traveled. But also, I was always working in customer service or sales always all the roles I ever had where I worked in the bank when I was younger but I always had this thing where I couldn't settle you know I always wanted something else something else or you know I I didn't like a box you were were entrepreneurial but you didn't you didn't have that exactly to push you You exactly you're jumping back and forth exactly and then when my marriage broke up my second marriage um, when my second marriage broke up, I, was, I know, I know my second marriage broke up. I kind of, it's like an elastic band that's pulled. And then I was just like, Phew! you know, it was like, it was crazy. I just felt I was ready. I was, it was the right time. You know, I was 40, mm-hmm. everything was do- lined up in a row. My do- other daughter is, um, is deaf. She has, uh, she's hard of hearing. She has two hearing aids and she was about to start mainstream school as well. So I was caring for her as well. So I was at home. I was at home and I was, I wasn't working at the time, you know, when I decided to do this. So, yeah, but always had great customer service skills and uh, I was in sales as well. And I was a great salesperson, but I could have got more sales only for that um, integrity thing. You know, that uh, I always mm-hmm. was conscious of doing the right thing. And there are some salespeople that I worked with that weren't it, quite like that. Yeah. But I used to get the sales anyway, just from being myself, you know. And and that's that's something I was always good at. So as you as you dive into this um, new new career, uh, what are some of the what? How do you find a way to to monetize what you do for businesses? Because you said you have one hotel that starts to uh, reach out and ask for you to help them with their Twitter, but. Um, to to monetize and to build the brand it, it's not a day one thing i'm sure that no. all the steps that you took along your career obviously helped and and ended up with somebody who could sell and market and tell stories and whatnot but walk me through maybe that first client and some of the things that you learned and why you decided to continue along the path of and how would you how would you describe yourself what is the career that you would describe yourself as doing now is it social media marketing is it twitter consultant is it keynote speaker is it a, a combination all of, the of above. all of them so all of, <laughs> all the, of above. the above well actually so, yeah, so i'm a social first client yes i'm a social media oh, consultant i say right so i've moved okay. from at first i was managing accounts so that first account that hotel i i found it very easy you see it just came naturally to me. I said, um, so what I did was once I got into their account, I started looking at their customers that had already been there. So I started looking at their notifications and their engagement. And I started chatting to Mary 
in Tipperary and saying, oh, Mary, how's it going? And I started looking at what she was tweeting. And then I commented and she she would go, oh, my God, the hotel is talking to me. And then she'd go, oh, hi, yes, I haven't been down in a long time. And then she said, oh, have you any offers at the moment? We'd, we're due a visit. And then I put the link for the special midweek offer. Bam. She'd book. And then the head office of the hotel chain actually called the marketing girl in there and said, your clicks to sale have gone up 15%. How did you do that? And she said, well, we hired Samantha. And so she started telling people about me because she was getting results. It was making her look good. It was making the hotel look good. Mm -hmm. And that's all. And that's when I realized I had a skill that I was able to engage and find customers just by engaging with them on social media. And that's really where I realized that the power of just engagement and making people feel special. And I did little videos before people were even doing videos, you know, that kind of thing. I was doing little videos and little clips and, you know, taking pictures of behind the scenes and the team and the human side of it all. And they they just did so well. So that's when I realized, okay, maybe I should start pitching to other businesses. But to be honest, once people started seeing what I was doing, they actually came to me and they said, look, will you just teach us? And then when I teach them, they go, oh, do you know what? Will you just do it for me? You know, and so they'd hire me, they would pay to be trained, but then they go, oh, will you just tweet for us? So then what happened was I had so many clients, I couldn't handle it all on my own. But then some clients might want Facebook or now there's Instagram. Instagram didn't exist when I started. And so then I had to get a team around me. So I started approaching people that I knew. All of my team I got from Twitter, by the way. I was watching them, how they respond to people, how they are, the stuff they were putting out, the content. And so I outsource to people who are better at the other stuff that I'm not good at. And so now I have a team. So now I'm more about the strategy and then I support the team around me and I don't manage accounts anymore, but my team do you know, if someone does need it. And I found that I was very feeling very isolated uh, working from online in particular, because especially here in this little village where I live, they didn't really understand Twitter. They didn't understand what I was doing. They, you know, a lot of businesses still don't, you know, have an online presence. So I found that my customers were actually outside of Ireland, were actually all over the world because it didn't matter where they were because it was online. And I knew that if I could reach other women like me, that I wouldn't be on my own. And so I created the Women's Inspire Network, which was just for for me to not feel as lonely. And I created a hashtag on Twitter and it was very successful. And it was so successful. People said, oh, can we have a Facebook group? And God, that grew to 8,000 and I was exhausted. I was exhausted doing all this good stuff for everybody else. And then I went, hang on a second, Samantha. You need to start thinking like a businesswoman. And I decided, you know what, if I charge a small fee of like 20 a month, people would be willing to pay that if they knew they were going to get value and they were going to learn and they were going to get opportunities. So that's why I started the Women's Inspire Network. And now we've members all over the world. We've 470 members from all over the world. And the pandemic certainly, you know, helped a lot because people needed that human connection. But it's all about stuff I've learned along the way for anyone listening that's thinking of starting a business it's all about relationships it's all about people people buy from people and that's the secret and how you make people feel you know if if you didn't like me I wouldn't be sitting on this podcast right now you know people work with Mm -hmm. people they know like and trust I won't interview someone if I think they're a bitch like you know I need to be with people who are going to give value and they're going to give value to my audience because my audience, if you notice my Twitter profile, it says nice people collector because I don't want, yeah, yeah, I don't want, and what does it do? It attracts nice people. Like the trolls and the negative people will just see that and go, oh, she's too fluffy for me. I'm not going to follow her. You know, so I, I just, it's the psychology behind it all. There's a whole psychology behind Twitter. So yeah, so that's really where where the journey has gone. And now I have 60,000 followers on Twitter and the Women's Inspire Network is growing every day. So it's it's been amazing. There's so many so many things that I want to go into. So let's see. We got community building. We got you know, brand perception. We got you know scaling an agency. We got different types of social content. So <laughs> there's a, you just touched on like five or six different things. I'm probably trying to probably fit it all. I'm people. probably trying to fit it all into 280 characters each point. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. No, this is this is long form. This is <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very good. Um, so 
I guess well let's let's go into a few of these things and I'm just trying to I'm trying to align the topics with how how your personal journey progressed. So um, I'm going to go back to to you scaling out the agency. So um, I think that that's important because a lot of entrepreneurs and people trying to start side hustles are uh, are on our our audience or you know that's our audience. So um, what are some of the steps that you t- you said you outsource? But uh, let's talk about you know early learnings in perhaps outsourcing and finding talent that would fulfill the requirements of the customer properly. And then I also want to talk about building out um, a, a recurring revenue or predictable revenue model, which you did with your community. Mm, mm. So give me some insight on, on how to build out basically a service-based business that isn't so easy, easily scalable day one. Yeah, well, what I did was I just made sure that um, I knew my stuff. So learn, learn, learn. There's so many courses out there. Get a coach. If you, if you have the budget for a coach, get a coach, but get a good coach. Get someone that's aligned with what you're doing or someone who's done it already. You know, for example, now I, I coach people one to one and I show them how to raise their profile, how to get to the right people. Um, you know, there's a lot of learning, but, you know, it's about expand your network first. Get the right people around you. The team I handpicked because I was watching them already. I saw how how good they were. And then, you know, get um, get a really good communication thing going, you know, either Facebook Messenger or, you know, that you're all in connect in contact and you're all helping each other because one of the one of the girls might feel unwell and then one of the other team members will jump in and take over that account. But you have to have the right person for each account. Like we have Ben, for example, who is great at the more serious accounts. And then we have Sharon, who's great at the kind of, you know, outgoing accounts. And, you know, you have different personalities to suit each client. Like I wouldn't put certain people in front of certain accounts. Um, but also, you know, the client has to know, uh, you know, well, actually, it's not going to be rerunning the account. It's going to be Ben or Sharon or Anya, you know, so it's about transparency as well. But if they want me, they'll have to pay triple the amount. So, you know, usually they're happy enough once I'm guiding them and they're getting results. Mm -hmm. So it's all about making sure the client understands what they're going to get, uh, setting realistic expectations, but looking after them. You know, and giving that little bit extra, I always give extra. So like, for example, I have a client, she's a music school, Sonia, and she has a music school and it was in uh, Terenure in Dublin. I don't live in Dublin, but it's a great music school. But what we did was before before the pandemic, I had already trained her and I was already working with her. So then when the pandemic hit, she pivoted all her lessons online. And now she has my daughter doing violin lessons because she can do it online, you know? And so now she has a global, uh, global students, not just in Dublin. And this kind of thing is really important. So, so I helped, you know, with other opportunities, like giving her a speaking moment at my conference, you know, that kind of thing. So I look after my clients, always look after them, like surprise and delight your customers. That's what I always say, surprise and delight. If someone joins my Women's Inspire Network, I send them a bonjour. If anyone wants to write that down, bonjour. It's an app where you I just know record. Bonjour. Do you? I know Casey I love it. Hill. He's one of. I had I had their head of growth on my podcast. I love bonjour. I love it too. It's just so powerful because yeah. if someone signs up to the Women's Inspire Network, I send them a message straight away. And one time I had yeah. the towel around my head. I just come out and had it had washed my hair, and I sent the bonjour. <laughs> and it, and the girls started laughing and saying, "Jesus, you know that's so funny. I feel so a part of this network already. You know, it was real. You know, and and so." Yeah. Yeah. So the biggest tip I can give is like, you know, surround yourself with good people who are better at the stuff you're not good at. Uh, look after mm-hmm. them um, and make sure your clients are looked after and they will stay with you. But also not only that, they will send you business. And if you look after your followers and your audience on Twitter, they will they'll do your marketing for you. They will tag you. They will recommend you. They they love people to do well. Like people have a lot of uh, negativity and fear around Twitter. But people on Twitter, actually, the demographic would be age 35 to 55 and the highest growing demographic are the over 55s. So they've been there, done that. They've probably been through some kind of divorce or tragedy or illness or house move or something. And they want to hang out with good people and they want to help the small business owner if they can. You know, so a lot of people don't know that about Twitter, but that that's there's just so much. I, I mean, 
I, I'm very proud of where I am now, but it took a lot of hard work. So another tip I'll give is, Brilliant. oh my God, keep at it. You know, surround yourself with good people, like have good people around you that you can bounce ideas off. Forget about the haters, the naysayers. I was told to get off my high horse. I was told, who does she think she is? Um, you know, I and it hurt, but you know what? I kept going and I was determined. So you do have to have that resilience and not give up if you really, if you're getting sales, if you're not getting sales, you don't have a business. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. If you are not getting money in the door, you don't have a business. And that's why when I had Funky Goddess, I wasn't, we had no coal. The fire was lighting and I was sitting around the fire with my two daughters and we had no coal. We had no money for coal. And I said, right, that's it. You know, this is not worth it, what I'm doing to my family. So I shelved Funky Goddess. As it happened, a customer bought it off me. But I had to face reality that it wasn't bringing in money and and keeping me going. You know, I needed to make a profit. So um, be really, really careful. If you do have a business idea, get a mentor, get advice from the right people and just say, look, if it's going to work, if you start getting sales, if you have something that solves a problem for someone and that people are willing to pay for, you have a business. And let's let's talk about now. So that's how that's how you've built out your business. Now let's talk about some of the some of the things that you try and do through your clients' accounts to help them build business sales through Twitter. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like most people just miss the mark on Twitter. It seems yeah. to be almost like a thing that businesses feel they have to have. But yeah. my goodness, if you ever see if you see the average business Twitter account, it's like why what you know, I know why they're bothering, but mm-hmm. also it's like why are you bothering? <laughs> because it's just horrible. It's just it's not it's doing just... anything net positive. I just want to take a second and thank the sponsor of today's episode, Faraday Brand Clothes. Faraday is the spot you should be going for summer outfits. We've been cooped up for far too long, been cooped up for the past year and a half, two years. We're going out, we're getting dinner, we're traveling, we're dating, we're doing whatever it is we want to do outside of the house. You want to look good, Faraday Brand has got you. Faraday is a family-run business making high-quality, timeless clothing, modern design, extremely functional. You know, whenever you're looking for the perfect summer outfit, you want to put on something that you feel like you've had for years, it fits you perfectly, that's Faraday. Except that's Faraday the second you order it. They produce exceptionally high-quality clothing that fits you the way it should fit you day one and looks high-quality, timeless, and modern. They are so confident in the quality of their clothing They're offering something that I've actually never heard of before. Whenever I bought clothes from anyone, they have a lifetime guarantee of quality on all their clothes. They will replace or fix your clothes forever, no matter what. And on top of the style, the quality, the fit, and the selection that they have of clothes, as well as this lifetime guarantee, they're giving all Success Story podcast listeners 20% off their entire collection. So stock up on summer clothes now. I know it's August, but you still still have a couple weeks left if you're somewhere more north, if you're somewhere more south, my goodness, you have no excuse. Go to faheritybrand.com. That is F-A-H-E-R-T-Y brand.com. You're going to use the code success story at checkout and you get 20% off all your summer gear. That code is success story at Faraday, F-A-H-E-R-T-Y brand.com for your 20% off. All right, let's get back to the show. Posting me, 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 me. And it's not yeah. about that at all. And sometimes I see, you know, big accounts like a big business and they've got like 100,000 followers and they're following 500. No, 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 no. That's the worst. And it looks so snobby. Um, And especially, you know, one like where, you know, if you follow back someone, if you follow someone back that's following you, like it's kind of courtesy, but also it's like if they're normal, I'm not talking about weirdos or anything, you know how to follow them. But like, you know, if you're following someone that's um, that's a a genuine person, you're going to make their day and it's going to make them feel special. Mm -hmm. So I always follow back people who I think will add value to my feed. So don't forget, it's not about me at all. It's about my audience. And I go and I make Twitter lists. And so you can keep an eye on the people who might be potential clients or potential customers. I also help them and add value. So what I do is, um, for example, at Christmas time, I created an Irish gift ideas Twitter list. So to kind of help the businesses that had suffered through the pandemic, I did an Irish gift ideas 
Twitter list. And people started buying from that list. So I asked anyone that had a business to, to let me know and I would add them to the list. So we had like, I think 700 on the list or no, I think I only had 250 on the list, but then 700 followed my list. So a lot of people actually messaged me, sent me letters, sent me flowers and said they got loads of sale from the sales from the fact that I made that Twitter list. So what I was doing was I was helping the people who were selling. I was also helping solve a problem for people on what to buy especially if their family were abroad and they couldn't see them at Christmas. They wanted to send them something Irish. And then I also added value to my audience because they knew that that list was there. They could just click on the list and see and it helped them do their shopping for Christmas. So just it's about adding value and helping your audience. Like I get many businesses saying, you know, oh, you know, we want to do a webinar and it's a panel discussion. blah blah. blah. And I'm like, oh, God, would you not just do what do your customers need right now well they need more sales okay why could you do a webinar on how to get more sales that would be more useful and more valuable so it's about thinking about the customer all the time and what they need i hope that answers your question it does no i think it's very smart and and i guess the the follow up or the the other point when when businesses put themselves out there and they start to build a profile they're probably concerned with falling outside of the box or doing things that are a little bit differently. Like when I look at the average business account, again, it's just, it's very boring. But then I look at something like, I'm just using one reference point, like a morning brew, which is all, you know, it's a news, it's a news outlet that's very off the, off the wall when it comes to their Twitter account. And that's actually probably how they've built a lot of their following. Yeah. But brands are always concerned about if I put myself out there, I'm going to get some negativity. I'm going to get some, like you said, some, you know, some trolls or whatnot. So how do you deal with, with that? Is that just in your own head? You have to get over it or are there actual strategies that you have to deal with when you start to get some, you know, colorful comments, uh, call them on, on <laughs> social. Well, you won't really yeah. start getting those till you go over like 5,000 followers or so. Right. And if you do just block them. Okay. If you get a customer complaint, that's a different story. Okay. So let's say you get a complaint. I had a coffee shop. <clears throat> I was running their Twitter account. And um, this lady said, oh, I was in there yesterday and the waitress was wagging and, you know, I, she didn't, and my coffee was cold or whatever she said. Right. So I said, right. Okay. Hi. So the first thing you do is I, you engage. You engage. I said, I'm really so we're really sorry to hear that you had this experience. Could we please DM you and get more details and investigate? So you take it offline. So even if she doesn't go to DM, you've shown the public that you're dealing with the issue. So you've shown the public that you've tried to deal with the issue, which which looks good, right? And then if they do go offline, what you do is you follow up. So you say, right, give us your number, give us your email or whatever. And then you get the person in charge, the decision maker to contact that person and find out what happened. What we did was we found out what happened we sent the lady a, a gift voucher to come back in and have lunch. She came in and had lunch. And guess what? She did a lovely tweet saying, thank you so much for the gorgeous lunch. She became a brand advocate because we helped her mm -hmm. and we dealt with the issue. So that's the only thing about like people hear about these big stories, big mistakes. Get the right person running your Twitter account or get them trained properly. And that will never, ever happen. So it's having a social media uh, strategy, having a policy as well, like so that if such and such happens, this is what we do, you know, have it all in place so that they know what to do. But the worst Twitter accounts I've seen have been bigger companies that that think they know their audience, but they actually don't. And they just don't engage. They don't say thank you. Just simple things like if someone like I mentioned a brand a few times because I liked that brand. Um, and I used to mention the brand because I'd be sitting there with my cup of tea and, and I'd mention the brand and they never even thanked me for mentioning them, which was a huge missed opportunity because if they had retweeted me or if they had engaged with me, I would have actually retweeted that to make them look good, mm -hmm. you know, because I'd be impressed by that. So any, I also always give kudos when I get great customer service and I never complain. I never get involved in controversy. I stay away from all of that and I just keep it positive, add value, share my knowledge and help others. And I help others by retweeting them. It's not about me. My audience would like to see other people as well, you know, and usually my audience want to support businesses. So I did actually have a great story from last week. And um, this lady rang me. She's yeah. a member of my Women's Inspire Network. And she had ordered uh, 500, lots and lots and lots of this vegan chocolate covered peanuts, right? Because she does uh, vegan chocolate. 
and uh, she rang me. She was quite upset. She said, I don't know what to do. That customer has cancelled the order and I've got it already ordered. I don't know what to do. How do I get rid of this much chocolate? And I said, wait, wait, don't panic. I said, let's do a tweet. So we did a tweet and the tweet said, um, um, hang on, I'll find it now for you while I'm talking to you. The tweet said, um, I have this amount of chocolate. Can you, if anyone is interested or whatever it was, we told the story basically in the tweet and I helped her compose the tweet and oh my gosh, it went viral. Because people said, oh, my God, let's help this small business. Da, da, da. And they all bought chocolate. Everybody. She got 100 orders. She got uh, three new stockists. Um, you know, she just was inundated with help from Twitter. And one guy just bought a box of them. And she got she got the chocolate all. She didn't lose any money. Isn't that just a lovely, lovely story? And that's the kind of thing I do. Yeah. So we just did. We just did a tweet. And I supported her. I said, come on, guys, let's support this small business. So. We got behind her and everybody went and bought chocolate covered, vegan chocolate covered peanuts. <laughs> so it's just a nice little story. But for everybody per box, it only costs like 10 euros, you know, so, you know, just yeah. every little bit. Yeah, it, it, it's easy when you get when you get a crowd involved to, to like the crowdsource, uh, you know, to crowdsource a brand, especially a small business can make a huge difference. Yeah. But, uh, you know, one thing that I, I think always happens and I don't really know why still in 2021 is that brands don't place value on the person or the or the person who runs their social media they feel like it's i, I don't know why that is it's like but an it seems extra like it's not a priority yeah it's, an it's like a, oh you know you're you're marketing and then tweet once in a while yeah you know <laughs> no there should <laughs> like be post, someone post on instagram or I just want to take a second and thank the sponsor of today's episode, HubSpot. HubSpot is the CRM platform that is easy to implement and is even easier to get your team to adopt. And ask anybody that's implemented new technology in a company, the biggest issue is not finding it or buying it. It's getting your team and your company to actually use it and adopt it. And when it's a piece like a CRM, one of the most critical pieces of your business infrastructure and your tech stack, if people don't adopt it and use it, that means you're getting incomplete data, you're getting missing data, you're getting garbage data, it could impact quite literally everybody in your company, as well as it could negatively impact your customers and your revenue. So how does HubSpot solve for this with their CRM platform? There's two components that they focus on that allow for organizational wide adoption. This is the contact timeline, as well as the mobile app. So the contact timeline gives a historical context for all of the data that is associated with a certain contact in the CRM. That means that anybody across the organization can see all the actions and all the interactions that have taken place against that particular contact. You can also use that timeline to make calls to these contacts, enroll them in sequences, put them into marketing or sales campaigns, schedule a meeting, open tickets. The historical timeline makes it easy to take action as well as to track the action that's been taken against all of your contacts. And it's not a pain to enter the information, which means that it doesn't take somebody a long time to put in great data, which can again, positively impact your whole company. The second piece is the access from anywhere, meaning if I have a phone and I'm on the road, the world's opening up a little bit more now, people are traveling again, I can use the HubSpot app to access my CRM anywhere, on the go, on the fly, doesn't matter. So I have complete access to the CRM, I have access to my spreadsheets, my calendars, my notebooks, all of my contacts. I can send messages across my team with the HubSpot keyboard. I can access my contacts, call them through the HubSpot app. I can take quick notes, I can take contact information, I can all log it into my HubSpot app so that I can pull it up later on my desktop when I'm back at home. It's simple, it's intuitive, intuitive. It's meant to make it easy, frictionless, so that your team sees the value in properly using the CRM to the fullest of its capabilities and gives them the tools and the tech to allow them to do it without spending too much time and causing them more headache. The best thing about HubSpot is that it can be set up for any size of business and it will scale with you. If you're just starting out, you can take advantage of certain features and then as you scale your business, you'll notice that HubSpot will support all almost anything you need as you grow. So if you do want to learn how to scale your business without scaling complexity, go to HubSpot.com. Yeah. 
There yeah. should be someone who is assigned this role and a plan and a strategy. Or if you don't want to, then outsource it to someone like me or someone else who does that. Like, you know, I don't understand it. They don't make it a priority. And it's so important because I remember seeing, um, I remember I put a tweet up saying, okay, ladies, best tinted moisturizer. Like it was just like for fun. And I put it up and I got all these responses about the best tinted moisturizer, which by the way, for the guys listening, it's like makeup, light makeup, right? For the summer. And um, so I got so many responses and I was like, where are all the brands? Not one brand hopped into that conversation and said, hey, Samantha, Samantha, we have a tinted moisturizer. It's really good. Here, there's, there's buy now, click to buy. Not one brand did that. And that was such a missed opportunity because the, the the tweet went crazy. We had about 200 responses. So that was 200 potential sales, you know? And and 200 responses on Twitter is like thousands of impressions. Yeah. Like thousands of people saw that. Yeah. For, yeah. for sure, for sure. Whereas if a brand had hopped you in do, and you said, see- you know, oh, hi, Sam, actually we have it, but look, we'd love to send you one to try. And if anyone else wants to try, here's a discount code, you know? Yeah. That's what I would do. Yeah. <laughs> Now, okay, so that now now let's 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 dive into to why Twitter versus mm. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube. So why Twitter? What what's the what's the opportunity for Twitter versus everything else? Well, the demographic on Twitter are CEOs and decision makers and small business owners. So they are my audience. Now it might not work for everybody. So if you are, you know, trying to get to a younger demographic, maybe you need to be on TikTok. You know, so you need to find who your customer is and understand who your customer is and understand your audience before you even choose which platform. Now, if you're really, really brilliant on Instagram, but your customers are on Twitter or LinkedIn, you know, you need to kind of, you know, you're going to have to decide what you're going to do. You could have the TikTok or whatever it is for your fun side and then just for for business, you need to be where your audience are. Um, so it's about getting to know your audience. It's also, you know, a lot of people say, oh, uh, I'm going to hire an influencer on Instagram. I'm an influencer on Twitter, but people seem to not think of an influencer being on another platform. There are LinkedIn influencers. You know, there are different influencers in different platforms. So it's really about deciding where your customers are. Twitter is where my, that's where my audience are. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok, actually. Uh, I'm there, but that's more for fun. But I do mix a little bit of Instagram because Clubhouse, a lot of your Instagram, your Instagram is connected to your Clubhouse. And I use Clubhouse and Twitter Spaces, social audio a lot, which is something people should look into if they're an expert in their niche. Definitely go onto Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces. So there's just so many. It's about finding where your audience are and where you're getting the results from. If you're on Instagram and you're getting lots of sales, then yes, stay there you know, but could you be missing out on other sales and another audience on Twitter? People on Twitter are professional, urban. They have a more disposable income. They're more likely to click buy now. And that's what I've noticed. And I just, I just love the Twitter community. It's a community. You only hear the bad stuff in the media about Twitter. You don't hear the beautiful stories like about the chocolate covered peanuts, like about the, the self-isolation yeah. help hashtag that I started, um, during the pandemic, I started a, a little movement where, well, I just started, I just did a tweet saying self-isolation if you wanted to connect with other people, self-isolating. And then I started a whole movement um, called hashtag self-isolation help and it went global. And I ended up on the news that night and the, the RT news crew came into my office here um, that night because people just embraced it. They wanted to help in some way. And so the only way they knew how to help was to actually, you know, if someone needed delivery or if someone needed the dogs walked or something like that, or a pharmacy prescription picked up, they were able to do something. So people felt so helpless during the pandemic. So if you can bring hope yeah. on Twitter, you'll be a hit. Um, a lot of a lot of the the success that you've had has been um, based on your ability to build a community. Yeah. It could be with a hashtag. It could be with uh, Thrive. Um, so let's talk about let's talk about Thrive Network. Let's talk about the Women's what that Inspire is, Network. How you built it, or as uh, Thrive uh, Inspire <laughs> the Thrive Network like, sounds well, great. I think, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm. You know what I was. You know what I was thinking. I was thinking of um, Ariana Huffington. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just for everybody listening, it's it's now seven fifty a.m. in the morning when we're recording this, and and she, <laughs> I was trying. I was trying to make it so that we could get it without without Sam having to stay up late because she's overseas. And anyway, so I haven't really had a coffee yet. That's so okay. So I'm so sorry. So it's okay. I like that. Sounds like a great network. <laughs> 
Anyways, Women's Inspire Network, not Thrive. Anyways. <laughs> you see, Women's Inspire, W-I-N. See, W-I-N, win. W-I-N, okay. So that's we always it. say I'll, stick if, with the winners. If I had known that acronym ahead of time, I thought about that, I wouldn't have screwed it up. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, stick boy. with the winners. <laughs> stick with the winners. It's fine. Do you know yeah. what? And this is another thing as well. You're allowed to make mistakes, right? Look, stop being so serious, everybody. Oh, my God. This pandemic, if anything, has it's taught true. us, has taught us, like, the importance of family and life and ugh, there's so yeah. many people have suffered through this so you know we need to have a bit of fun a bit of joy in our lives and if you're not having fun run your business stop doing it because it'll just kill you I you love know that. and, and yeah. I, I've seen it I've seen my dad work really 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 hard and you know you know it, it's so important to have joy in your life and and hang out with good people forget about the one that drains you you know that person who drains you and it's all about them and every time you visit them or you hear from them you're just exhausted afterwards get those people out of your life they won't even notice they'll go move on to someone else and it's something i always say um but yeah don't be worrying about things like that and i just think it's funny you know and you know we need to laugh at our mistakes as well and i i did loads i made loads of mistakes okay so you know the women's inspire network like one of the mistakes i made as i said was i had this facebook group with 8000 members but it was just all and then yeah. it turned into kind of spammy and, and i said okay there has to be a better way of doing this so what what i did was i made it more structured we do weekly webinars on topics that they need. We have a Facebook group that's really engaged so people can come in and say, look, do you know what? I actually don't know how to do a Facebook messenger bot, for example, or how do you set up a Facebook ad or can anyone help me? And all those little things. Mm -hmm. So we're helping each other all the time. And then we celebrate the wins. Somebody got featured in a magazine or someone got featured, their podcast reached 25,000 listeners and things like that. You know, we're able to celebrate the wins and the lows as well. And that's what you need. So it's not just about business. A lot of women actually have joined who are actually in uh, jobs for companies, but they're just a lot of guys working there. So they like to kind of have that kind of touch, but they're thinking maybe of starting a business later. So, you know, what are the, mecha what are the mechanics of doing that, of actually building out a, um, like a paid membership community? Yeah. What, how did you set that up? Well, I just said with the 8,000 members I already had and then my followers on Twitter, I just said, look, if you want more value and you want to get the weekly webinars, the PR opportunities, all of that, um, it's 20 a month. Here you go. And I just sent the link for them to join. And it's a monthly payment thing. So it's, it's, it's like my web lady, my web person did it, you know, so that it's set up, they click and it automatically comes out every month. That's it. And did you have trouble getting people who were consuming all the free content to convert? Because that's actually, I'm just asking now selfishly yeah. for me, because yeah. that's something that I'm trying to figure out. And, and that's something that I'm, I'm always concerned. Like I'm always putting out free stuff into the world, but yeah. how do you, how do you justify? Okay. What I did yeah. was a post. I did a post and I said, look guys, you know, thank you so much for your support in this group. I've decided to create a paid membership. I'm going to close this group at the end of the month. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. if you want to join the paid one, we're opening a new Facebook group over there. So they felt like they'd be missing out if they didn't go to the new group, but also gotcha. it weeded out the ones that like, they were like, oh, I'm not paying. Why should I pay? I'm like, okay, thank you. No problem. Go to a different network. That's fine. But you know what I mean? The ones that did understand what value they were going to get and already had that really engaged uh, and wanted to learn more and, and knew they would get value and knew me, the people who knew me knew that I would make it work really so you do have to build that no like and trust factor mm -hmm. so if people know like and trust yeah. you they will buy from you and it's so important i know it's a cliche we hear it all the time but it's so important if they didn't like me and they didn't trust that i was going to give value they wouldn't have joined and now you're running you're running webinars on there you're running events on there you run live streams as well as well, I do. I've on, actually got an interview tonight uh, with uh, um, two of my clients. Um, they're a couple. They live in Spain and um, they have a, a, a beauty, uh, a beard oil, actually. They, they, they do a, a product of beard oil and stuff. And it's kind of high end. And so I'm interviewing them tonight. I'm going live with uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, all at the same time. I'm using Restream. So I do that as well. Yeah. And then how do you, so last question on that, um, because I saw, and, and I'm asking this, you see, I'm, I love these because I, I get to learn from, from the best <laughs> in the world who's done it before. So when all these, all these things that you figured out, they make a lot of sense. And one thing that I also, I personally haven't figured out. Um, so I know that other people are still trying yeah. to start, are still struggling with this. Yeah. When you run a live stream, I find that 
um, when when you run a live stream or even when I find when you run social audio, you go into Clubhouse, I find that very small percentages of your audience convert in real time mm -hmm. for the f like the first time I've ever done. I've tried to do live streams before and whatnot. So what are some what are some tips that you may have for somebody who's trying to do a live stream? Because I see the value in that. But to get it so that more of your audience joins, perhaps you get the event to trend somehow. Do you have any uh, any best practices? For a live stream or for an event? That's two different. Like yeah. an event. If I was doing an oh, event. that's like, true, actually. If okay, I was so, doing an online okay, let's event. Say, let's, say, yeah. let's say for an event. Let's okay. say for an event. So yeah. Social Media Bootcamp, uh, we did there in May and we charged 30 euros a ticket. We had 160 people came and it was just two hours long. So we did TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Twitter. You know, we just covered the basics. Beginner's guide to social media. and. It was so cool. We trended because people were putting comments up. They were watching the the thing. They were using the hashtag. Um, so what I did was I just told them what value they were going to get. Um, if, you, if, if they think they're going to get value and they're going to learn something, they'll pay for it. Because one girl went, oh, my God, TikTok, brilliant. I'm going to buy that ticket now, you know. Um, but they always trust me anyway. Anytime I run events, they know they're going to get value. So it is about building up that, that trust factor and, and delivering and giving them a brilliant event to talk about. Like the first conference we did, like I remember I had some, like I had one or two kind of star speakers, but really they loved the normal uh, member who I gave an opportunity to, to be on the stage. So I give one, one or two members an opportunity to get on the stage and uh, that we probably wouldn't get before. And then they get more speaking moments after that because someone in the audience saw them and said, you know, I'd love you to speak at our chamber event or our event next week. Um, so what I do is I give them opportunities, but I make sure the topics are relevant. So I used to go to so many events and I get a babysitter and I stay in a hotel and I drive up and I'd leave the event going, do you know what? That was all about them. I didn't, I didn't get any value out of that. Whereas if I know what issues people are having, like I'll ask them before this next event in October, we have our annual conference and I'm going to do it online again this year, just because people are still a bit afraid, you know, um, and I will ask them, what topics would you like us to cover in the conference? And I'm going to have a team of let's get back to let's get back to business or let's let's rock uh, and get ready for 2022 or whatever. You know, I'll, I'll put the team around what people are going through at the moment. So that's what I do. So if you have a, a topic that's relevant, people will buy if they think they're getting value. Put a call to action always in your tweet. Um, if you are talking about the event, put a call to action in your live stream. So say, look, if you want to connect with uh, Scott and you want to be a guest in his podcast, here's his link and drop it into the live stream. Another thing you can do is you could actually say, look, Scott has a webinar coming up next week. If you'd like to come to the webinar, here's the link. Do your free webinar, Scott. And most of the time when people do webinars for my network, the conversion rate, like let's say 10, let's say if 10 only turned up, three of those would book for her, for her workshop or her masterclass. Mm -hmm. So the conversion rate is really, really good from free webinars. So I always suggest people start doing their videos, doing their free stuff like you're doing now, and now you're ready to go to the next level. So add value. What do people need right now? What's going to make them sign up? Make it com make it compelling and like a, a no brainer, or that they're going to miss out on something. Hope that helps. Very very smart. Yeah, no, it definitely helps. And and did you have? And I guess the the, the just to the, to finish off that thought because yes, yeah, so that would be incredible advice for for webinars. And then do you have any additional advice for for live streams because live streams are a, a little bit of a different beast. Um, Always and, just and, put the uh, Twitter handle of the person yeah. underneath so that it make it easy for okay. them to connect with them um, and just give value. Because you said you they, use Restream as well for that? Yeah. And then what I do is I go back and I reply and I get the guests to reply to all the people who commented. So go back to the comments and say, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for thinking that. And thanks for your kind words. Just engage with them, connect with them on LinkedIn, then connect with them on Twitter, follow each other and start building, build a Twitter list of live stream audience. It seems like such common sense, but <laughs> the amount is. of times that people don't, that they, they just don't do it. I know. Right? Just I to know. engage. Look, I had a 50th Even, birthday uh, in lockdown, right? I had a, sorry for interrupting. I had a 50th birthday in lockdown. No, no, no. And um, I just put a picture of me with a balloon in the kitchen <laughs> for my 50th birthday because I couldn't have a party, right? And um, the amount of people that wish me happy birthday, obviously you can imagine, right? I went back to every single, if you go and look at that tweet later, you will see I went back and I thanked every single person who wished me happy birthday. There were a lot of them, but I did it. 
because I just felt it was so important to acknowledge them. And I think that that's a really good point. Like social media is not just this megaphone that you have that you use to talk to the world. Yeah. It's it's you can use it to talk to the world, but then you go you go into the comments, you go and respond, you go engage, and that's that's where the true relationships are built. Yeah. That's that's that is where the true relationships are built. Absolutely, and it's like walking into a room and ignoring. Half of it. They don't know the half, and I think it's it's like walking into a room and ignoring some like someone says hello and you just ignore them. You know, that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. And and one girl actually said to me, I was in Clubhouse doing a Twitter room and she actually did a tweet. I've actually bookmarked the tweet. She said, uh, after f seven years on Twitter, 15 minutes of tweeting goddess and I know a hell of a lot more than I ever knew before. You know what I mean? And it's just like, like it's, a lot of people don't understand Twitter and they don't, they have a lot of fear around it. But that's why I'm very mm -hmm. lucky I chose this niche. And I didn't, I think the niche chose me really. You know, I didn't actually, it just kind of happened. Uh, so I'm very lucky blessed incredible um okay so i want to i want to finish up with some rapid fire questions but okay. before we pivot um was there anything any other points with inspire or with the work that you're doing or any other lessons that you wanted to to go into or did we cover a lot i think the main thing is you know decide what it is you want to be an expert in and become that expert show people you are the go-to person surround yourself with good people join my women's inspire network you know, there are good people there. And if you don't even join mine, join a different one. But make sure you surround yourself with good people. If someone's bitching about someone, they're probably going to be bitching about someone else tomorrow or you. So sure. I always stay away from people like that. So, you know, surround yourself. Start by following myself and Scott. You know, follow us on Twitter. Engage <laughs> with us. Tell us you, you listen to the podcast. We'd love to hear that you listen to the podcast. And we'd love to see you tweet. And so I will retweet your tweet if you tweet to me. So just start by helping others and, and, and support them and they'll support you back. Um, and just be yourself. Amazing. You don't have to look. I just be myself. And, you know, I'm not your normal businesswoman either. And, you know, when I do walk into a room, I do get noticed. And um, my husband was laughing, you know, because people come up and they say hello to him because he's my husband. <laughs> it's like just because I put pictures of him on Twitter, they all know him. It's so funny. And he hates the limelight. But just be yourself and, and treat everybody with respect and everybody the same. Um, you just never know who you're speaking to. Agreed. Uh, very, very good advice. Um, mm -hmm. And especially, especially just because actually I, I thought I was thinking about this the other day, but everything you put online and that's another just a, a, an aside. Everything you put online is there forever. And that's yeah. something that people, I think, may not think through sometimes. <sighs> Yeah, they'd so, be having a rant or something and, and they'd be bitching about yeah. me like and I just I can see people send them to me. They send me the screenshots and don't j j just you just never know who's watching. Keep doing the right thing. Keep yeah. being the best at what you do. Ignore the copycats. Just keep being the best. And, you know, there are just so many good people out there. Just most people are good and they're kind and, you know, just stick with them. I want to I want to capture all the socials website. Where should people go to connect with you on Twitter, on other social, um, your personal website, just so that it's uh, it's on the on the show. Yeah, tweetinggoddess.com, tweetinggoddess.com, and I'm tweeting goddess more or less everywhere, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. Oh, it's easy. <laughs> okay. okay that's yeah, very, and that's very another easy. little tip actually. Keep your branding all the same as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay biggest challenge that you've overcome in your own career in your own personal life it could be professional it could be personal you've you, you mentioned a few but what's one that stood out and how did you overcome it um getting sober so 13 years sober um and uh the the biggest congratulations tip, for that thank, thank you but the biggest tip is you know go to meetings do the right things do what's suggested um biggest tip in business uh don't ever take criticism from someone you would never go to for advice. That's very smart. Yeah, good that's advice. Morgan Freeman. It's not my quote, but I love it. It's still good advice. Yeah. <laughs> is, is that from a movie? I don't know. It's just a quote <laughs> I found. It. I, I found Morgan Freeman just popped up and I just loved it so much. It's so true. Why would you take criticism from true. someone you'd never go to for advice? Like, you know? No. Very good. Um, if you had to choose one person who was incredibly uh, influential or impactful on your life, who was that person and what did they teach? My dad. 
he taught me the value of hard work and kindness he used to help a lot of people like a lot of young men who were going down the wrong path he'd uh, say oh I need a hand building this shed or I need a hand doing this and he'd kind of take them under his wing and he'd have them working with him for the day and then he'd bring them fishing and you know try and help them and find out what's going on for them yeah what would be a, a podcast or a book that you'd recommend people go check out oh sorry yeah well there's my book little book of twitter magic i know um one book one podcast i actually one or the other scott's podcast is the best one and um it's, book it's also got that <laughs> book um i suppose that the the, the 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 there are lots of books there's so many business books but there's none that really kind of i'm not a great book reader uh the best book i have is the uh the aa book i'm afraid that's my 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 bible so no good that's very good that's fine that's that's completely fine um if you could uh tell your 20 year old self one thing what would it be stop drinking <laughs> <laughs> um let me see that's it yeah yeah i suppose um, are you are good enough you are good enough and what does success mean to you? Success means not worrying when the doorbell rings or when the bill comes in the door, that I'm able to pay it and that my family Very are good. happy and my girls are content. Amazing.